الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونسترشده ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام يقول ربنا جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed all praises and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe We praise him and we thank him for his favors, his mercy and his blessings we believe in Him and put our trust in Him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves and from the evil of our actions. For whoever chooses guidance, there is none to misguide him. And whoever chooses misguidance, there is none to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah whom Allah sent with the religion of truth and with guidance so that this truth and this guidance will become established in the land over all other religions although the idolaters detest that. My dear brothers and sisters, Perhaps the most important concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of us as human beings in general and of course as Muslims in particular the most important concept that he wants us to subscribe to and to strive to achieve in our lives at all levels is that of justice. So we can safely say that justice is the most important thing, especially from the Muslim's perspective. Now a person might say, hold it. The Tawheed of Allah, the oneness of Allah is the most important thing in the life of the individual. And that is also correct. There is no contradiction between these two statements. Because Tawheed, subscribing to the oneness of Allah, is justice. And associating partners with Allah is the gravest injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Luqman, when Luqman advised his son, admonished his son, Allah tells us, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ And remember when Luqman said to his son, while he admonished him and advised him, My dear son, do not associate partners with Allah. And then he tells his son, why? إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ For indeed shirk, associating partners with Allah, choosing anything else over Allah the Creator is the gravest form of injustice. لَظُلْمٌ azim. So everything, brothers and sisters, even the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala boils down to the concept of justice. For it is a grave injustice for a creation of Allah especially a human being who has intelligence to understand and to recognize that Allah is the only creator and sustainer, is the only one who created him and everything else. 
and sustains everything. And therefore, he deserves to be worshipped. And the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, when we look at his life, brothers and sisters, there are many things we can say, of course, about his life. But perhaps the most important concept that stands out in his life Among the many things, of course, that, are, that stand out is that of his keen sense of justice and the importance he placed on justice in his life. In dealing with every single person, he did not do justice as a ruler only. He did not do justice as the commander of the army. But even at the level whereby he interacted with his own family, he was very, very careful and concerned about justice. So even at that level, he practiced the concept of justice and fairness. So he was not only fair and reasonable and just in public, but he was also reasonable, fair and just in private. Look at the emphasis that the Prophet والسلام, placed on justice when he encouraged some of the early Muslims during the fifth year of prophethood to migrate to Ethiopia. The Muslims were being tortured in Mecca, and we all know this. Tortured severely, many of them. And the Prophet والسلام, could not himself do anything to protect them. The most he could offer to them was once when he passed by the family of Yasir. This is an entire family. A father and his wife, husband and wife, and their son Ammar. When he passed by this family, being tortured by Quraysh in Mecca, all he had to offer them is the truth and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to them, Sabran ala yasir, fa inna masirakumul jannah. Be patient and steadfast, O family of Yasir, for surely your destination is paradise. Your destination is paradise. But that, of course, did not take away from the physical pain and torment that the early Muslims were subjected to. So eventually, he, he encouraged them to migrate, to migrate to Ethiopia, a land that was ruled by a king who was Christian. A king who was Christian. Islam is in its early stages, having been on the scene only for five years. And yet the Prophet والسلام, encourages the Sahaba, these early Muslims, at least some of them, to migrate to a land that is Christian. He's not concerned or worried about the, the Muslims losing their faith. No. Look at what he, how he justified this. He said, for verily in that land, there is a ruler, there is a king who is just, and no one is wronged in his land. So you'll be safe there. A Christian king, but was known for his level of justice and his subscription to the concept of justice, that the Prophet ﷺ was comfortable enough to encourage the Muslims to migrate there. And true enough, of course, when the Muslims migrated, they were faced and they enjoyed the, the, the justice that was prevalent in that land to the point where they were never ever pressured to give up their religion and to embrace Christianity. In fact, eventually the king Najashi himself would become a Muslim. And I'm sharing all of this with you brothers and sisters so that we get a very clear picture 
of how important justice is in our lives as Muslims in particular. And I'm saying all of this because in our families today, our sisters and our children are still faced 